And inevitably, when people meet me, they say to me, wow, you're nothing like I thought you were. Or, you know, they see me on stage and then they see me off stage and they, they, they say things like, wow, you know, you, you come across on stage as this like a big, mean, you know, monstrosity of a, of a, a person. And off stage, you know, you're just kind of like a, just a mellow, regular guy. A lot of people, a lot of times, think that uh, they, um, they deserve more time with me than I can give a lot of times. And, you know, sometimes that's a problem, especially when you have other obligations and or you're in between obligations, you don't have time to, like, stop and talk to a person. The more exposure the band gets, the, m the less pri privacy I have, and uh, you know, it's it's difficult because uh, I'm a loner. <laughs> I always was a loner, even when I was in, in grade school. I was a loner, um, and so I find it difficult sometimes. I don't want to be some outgoing, you know, celebrity type person when I know deep down I'm really not, and so. A lot of times I'll just be the quiet person that I have to be and sometimes people think that you know that's just arrogance or, or something and, and it really isn't you know it's just the way I, you know, I am. A lot of times it's just I, I, I feel that, that I'm disappointing people <laughs> and uh, you know I don't want to disappoint people. I first saw Metallica in uh, 1983 I mean, I was just a fan like everybody else, and I just continued to go to shows and see the band afterwards, hanging out, you know, after the show, having a beer with them here and there. And over time, uh, a friendship developed that uh, I've maintained to this day. Think of a UFO song, I'll play it. I'm from Mark Paschke. I am an assistant public defender here in Chicago. I've been working for the Cook County Public Defender's Office for roughly the last seven, eight years. It's a typical bad neighborhood in Chicago, and uh, the people that you know I deal with every day in court, many of them come from neighborhoods like this. Their attitude is always, you know, very, you know, bitter, upset. They're being they're being hassled by police left and right every day. They're going to the store, they're getting hassled. They're going to school, they're getting hassled. And I think Metallica sings about that kind of attitude, that kind of uh, that injustice. All or nothing. Oh. <laughs> actually an old faces song that UFO covered. That's obscure. The reason I became a PD was because I wanted to try to help a lot of these people that really haven't necessarily had a fair shake. In Metallica, in a few of their songs, they talk about the justice system and they talk about the idea that it, you know, it's all payoffs and it's all about money, but I don't think it's necessarily about money. I think it's about power. Every one of my clients is black. You know, what's that all about? You know, every one of them, you know, 97% of them are black and it's all drug cases. Does that mean that, you know, there's no white people committing felonies with drugs? You know, there's, there's something weird about that. I mean, the, the, the one thing about the job is that, you know, you're up against it. You know, it's you against everybody. It's you against the police, you against the judges often, you against the prosecutor, you against public opinion. You're not really respected as an attorney. You're not really respected, you know, your clients certainly aren't respected and you're representing them. And, uh, I think with Metallica, one of the reasons I initially got into the band was their attitude. You know, before they became this huge, huge band, they were just this very extreme, hardcore, angry, bitter group of guys playing this music that really hit home. You know, when you were a Metallica fan in 1984 or 1985, people were like, you know, what are you listening to? What are you doing? You know? And as they became more successful, you were empowered by that. You began to feel like, yeah, you know, their success is my success because I was there when they were you know, not as big. 
we were com when we were coming up here today, we were thinking about the show at the Metro too, where you were playing your guitar. It's the first yeah. time I ever saw you guys. You're yeah. playing your guitar and you did this move where you like put it over the crowd and the, the crowd just took it. <laughs> and you're just standing there going. Uh, and it landed right on one of my friends, actually. <laughs> I met Kirk, like I said, in 83, 84. Uh, oh, and over the years, you know, I just got to know him better. One of the things that, for me, has kind of always been interesting with Kirk is I live vicariously through him. You know, the things I want to do, because we have similar interests, you know, uh, the things I wish I could afford to buy or see or people I, you know, like to meet, he's doing that, you know, every day. And it, it, it's, you know, I'm jealous, but on the other hand, it's cool that at least, you know, he's doing it and I can hear about it. But I mean, over the you know over the course of of time, every time I was in Chicago, I'd always see Mark, you know, and we kind of establish a, a report, a genuine mutual interest interest in, 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 in death. Um, <laughs> Mark brought us to uh, Cook County Morgue, and we uh, went to the morgue and hung out, and uh, it was a, a a really great date for my wife and I. This is you know when we were still just starting to, 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 to see each other, my wife and I. I met this freak that worked there that was kind of like, you know, Kirk, I'd love to meet Kirk. So he, he set this up so when Kirk would come in, they were going to do autopsies and everything right when we got there. And uh, the second that we walked in, they, they pretty much said, okay, they're here, let's start. And they uh, all performed uh, autopsies simultaneously.